Right. Hi, everybody. I am Adam Weiss. I am the founder and CEO of App Demo Videos. We've actually been making videos for technologies of all sorts, a lot of mobile apps and all through the spectrum up to enterprise for 10 years now. So I want to talk about what you need to think about if you're thinking about making video for a tech product. That's really what we focus on. And I want to give you tips, ideas, some case studies, and then answer whatever questions you have. The technical details of how to make a video itself kind of really depend on the specific one video you're making. So feel free to ask me about that, but this is more about the various types of videos you might make, why you'd want to do them, and some tips about how to do that and, uh, and where. So we are one of the top producers of tech videos, specifically mobile app videos, but all sorts. As I said, we've been doing it for 10 years, have done videos for everybody from indie developers with an idea, which some of you may be, up to some of the biggest companies in the world. We've done work for Oracle, Netflix, Microsoft, AT&T in the US, um, Telefonica, all sorts of places. And we've done, am I, am I shifting out of the, I'll stay over here. <laughs> I tend to wander. Anyway, um, we do work for companies of all sorts, of all sizes, and uh, try to tell their story whatever their size and whatever their, their topic. So we're just getting started here in Australia and um, trying to introduce ourselves to the community. I'm always happy to help people. If you just have questions about video, have questions about these things, just get in touch with me. I am on the Slack uh, and I can be, I'll get, put my contact info up at the end. But when I say video, what everybody probably initially thinks is YouTube, right? You think, okay, well, where do you go to watch video? You watch a lot of video on YouTube. But I wanna talk about the power of video in ways that more than just YouTube and, and some of the other places you may think of. And the first one I want to talk about is actually doing video on Google. Google, because they own YouTube, preferences video out of, over other content. There's a huge SEO advantage to making video about your product in some ways that are kind of unexpected. So to give an example of this, let's run a Google search for a semi-popular, still popular app these days. So let's do something, check out Fortnite app, see what happens. So when you search for Fortnite on Google, you get interesting results. The first two make a lot of sense. They're the direct link downloads to the App Store and to Google Play. Then you get the official Fortnite Epic Games website. And then you get videos. And those videos are user generated. Those are not videos that, that Epic has put out because Epic doesn't have a lot of official video content around Fortnite. So, this is a little bit of a, a pitfall if you're Epic because you don't know what the content of those videos are. If you have a product and somebody likes it enough to share it on YouTube, which is a really common thing to do these days, their video could end up here right at the top of the search results instead of whatever content you'd like to, to contribute. And that video could be poorly made, could be critical, could be just long and rambling. It could reflect negatively upon your product. So a big reason to think about making a video of any sort that is decent and official is to claim these spots on Google before anything else. So if somebody searches for your app or for what you do, having, these, having this, because Google owns YouTube, is a really valuable tool when it comes to SEO. So these, that spot there can move up and down. I'm sure you all experience this. You search for something on, on Google, and sometimes it's at the very top, sometimes it's a, a few results down, never at the bottom of the page. Always video on top because Google makes money when people watch YouTube videos, so they promote their own content, basically. But YouTube, of course, is a major place that people go to look for, for videos. It's actually the second largest search engine in the world after Google, so the two together are just a tremendous behemoth when it comes to where people look for things. So let's do another video search uh, on YouTube. This time we'll search for one of our clients the iOS mobile app uh, GoodReader. It's a PDF reader that's been around for a number of years. And see what it's like if the presentation, ah, you know what? This is misbehaving. So let's see if I can get this to behave properly. We'll go to this slide or we'll just skip this part. Let's see. Ah, okay, search for Google. Even not live, live demos sometimes don't go well, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So search for GoodReader, and at the very top here, you get an official video, which is something we made for them. We've actually updated this video since, so this is a little bit of an, an old capture. But interesting things to focus on here, 
are the fact that that official video actually has the smallest number of views out of, uh, out of the, those three that I've highlighted, but it comes up first because Google actually tracks connections between websites, between uh, like Google My Business accounts, between other things, so that it will pull the official content up to the top. So even if you make a video and somebody has made, made user-generated content, you can claim a higher rank in some cases because they know that it's yours. So that's an advantage if you're thinking, oh, well, somebody has done something. What do I do to try to, to overtake that spot? You get an official unfair advantage from Google by putting out your own content. Let's do another example, this time for an app that isn't one of our clients. The boxes are misbehaving, but anyway, search for the popular iOS to-do app, Todoist. Now, Todoist doesn't have an official video, or at least doesn't have an official video that gets much attention at all. So what you get instead is you get this introduction to Todoist, tutorial for beginners. Look at the length, six minutes and eight seconds. A beginner video that's six minutes and eight seconds is not something that gives you confidence that this app is really easy to use, right? If you're saying, I wanna get started with this, here's a six, seven, eight minute video. Here are 167 videos in a series called Working with Todoist. These are all unofficial content because it is a popular app. But again, it doesn't give the best impression of the ease of use. This is actually, I mean, people use Todoist. It's pretty an easy used, easy, easy used tool, but it doesn't seem that way from the search results. And here, my 2018 Todoist setup 15 minutes and 30 seconds. People don't like long videos of this sort, especially when they're trying to learn about a product. So if you have a nice, concise, short video that can teach you about that product, then that'll give a lot more information. So to compare these pieces here, the Goodreader videos versus a couple Todoist videos, that Goodreader video is, if I can get back, the Goodreader video is a lot shorter. It's under two minutes and it gives a much more clean, crisp impression. So even having any type of video that's well done doesn't have to be totally professionally produced. It just needs to be well thought out, organized, and concise. That can make a huge difference in the way people perceive your product even before they've had a chance to, to go to the App Store listing, download it, try it. So some of the main marketing advantages of video that are related to what I just said are that you get to take control of search results, both on Google and YouTube, and in some instances, and I can talk about this if you want, in the app stores themselves, because you get preference in the app stores if you have videos in your app store listing. I've heard that from both major app stores. It gives you a professional curated first impression of your product to the potential users, and that can lead to better reviews because people self-select saying, this is a product I want to try. They will be happier with it once they download it. If they don't know enough about your product, when it comes time to make that purchase or free download decision, they're more likely to leave a negative review. But if they have a very clear idea of what your product does and doesn't do, then the people who don't want the product won't try it. And then you won't get one star saying, you know, this, this won't mow my lawn. You know, <laughs> that's not what it's for. And it can all result in more users, in more customers, and more revenue if you do all these things. So the pieces that people tend to think of, major video sources, Google, YouTube, putting it on your website, there are a lot of other places that video can be really advantageous as well. So obviously the website video, the landing page video is something really powerful. The explainer video, if you wanna call it that, where people come to the website, they get the brief overview of what your product is in say somewhere between 45 and 90 seconds and they come away with a much better understanding of what your offering is. But App Store videos are incredibly po popular and incredibly powerful these days. As I said, I've heard directly from someone high level at Google Play and indirectly through a major client from someone high in the Apple App Store that they are far more likely to feature a video in the App Store if it has a video in the, uh, sorry, feature an app in the App Store if it has a video in the App Store listing. So you can obviously, you can embed app previews in the App Store on iOS up to three videos at this point. You can embed even more videos on the Google Play Store. And if you do that, you get preferential treatment through the actual app um, review process when it comes to what gets featured, what gets put in, in our lists, those kind of things. Even customer support is a big video advantage. If you have a lot of users and people are constantly asking you certain questions, making videos to answer those questions are a lot, it's a digestible format. People don't necessarily want to read a bunch of text, but they will watch a short video about how to do something. That'll actually in, in, it potentially improve your review scores as well, because if they can go and answer their question without asking you, then they leave happy. And those people are uh, generally more able to use your product and therefore more likely to become a product evangelist if they're really somebody that is enjoying it. Bloggers, news, they love video because, not no offense to any bloggers, but fundamentally the way blogging works these days is you kind of have to be lazy in a sense. You can't write 
16 pages of content about something, you can't even write four or five paragraphs these days because they just want clicks and they want somebody to sit on the page for a certain amount of time so that they get their seven cents from somebody watching or listening to this particular uh, feature. And if you give them a video, that solves their problem. All they have to do is write a few sentences and put your video in and then people will sit there on the page for long enough for them to get their money and they'll learn what you want them to learn about your product because you've provided that video. We've made a lot of videos that go out there to the press and they're just used directly right at the top of a blog post, right at the top of a news article because someone will just click it and use that as their, as their content. Um, another big important place that video can be used, obviously social media, um, both directly through posting on Facebook and through social media advertising. We don't make a lot of ads ourselves, but I can give you some information about that at the end. And a couple of places where people really don't think of, trying to get investors. Video is really powerful for investor pitches. Now, I'm not saying you should make a video of your investor pitch and put it out there, but using video in an investor pitch to augment the information you're giving can be really powerful. It can replace live demos so that they go smoothly every single time, and it can really give that polished feel rather than this kind of haphazard, I'm gonna switch inputs and do this other thing. I can just show exactly how the product works and know that every time I click the button, as long as the slides behave, it'll work pretty well. And then finally, if you're trying to use video as a presentation, say in webinars or to include in presentations in various ways, video can be really powerful that way. We've made some webinar replacement videos for major clients to cut down on the costs of doing webinars over and over again. So, as an example, again, if I'm doing a presentation and I wanna do a YouTube search, all I have to do is click this button and this is going along on its own. It looks, if I wanted to, I could pretend. I could be over here touching things. It would look like I'm actually using YouTube to search for things, but I'm not. And you can even take that a step further with mobile and make it look really, really good. And that means that there's no stress in the live demo portion of whatever your product is. You can just put it on the screen, it'll work every time, and then you can go on. So. Video is incredibly powerful and incredibly useful, and this is one of my favorite quotes we've gotten as feedback from one of our clients. Um, Andy Blacker, the CEO of Red Note, said, as far as our business has come, that video is still the best thing we did. It was the best investment we ever made. We made an investor pitch video for them that went into their package that was going out to try to get funding. They actually ended up get fun getting funding, coming back to us about a year later to make a video of the finished app, which was a little bit different than the concept. And then that has actually become quite popular. They've gotten buy-in from all the major mu music labels out there, and they're actually able to use major music label content in their app at either low cost or no cost because they're, they're sharing some of, the, um, some of the revenue. And that wouldn't have happened without having that video. So it can be really, really powerful. So people ask a lot, what is the ROI of video? And that can be easy and hard to, to answer depending on the particular situation. When you talk about using video as advertising on Facebook directly as ads through Google ads or YouTube pre-roll ads or on Twitter, you can often measure that directly. If you put a video out there and you can see how many clicks you've paid for, how many of those clicks convert, that ROA is something that, that you have to kind of calculate on your own, but you can see that and th there is evidence out there that there, the ROI can be very, very high for the right type of video. But other types of video, the ROI can be a little less clear, so even though it can be pretty direct, in, in, for, in, for example. We did a webinar replacement video for Oracle where they were paying five sales engineers to do this talk multiple times a week, every week, to try to pitch to potential clients. So they're paying five people for 45 minutes at the, simultaneously playing roles of kind of talking about how this product would work. Now, two problems there. Paying five people for an hour gets expensive when you're talking about high-level uh, sales engineers for this thing. And these people were acting roles. They're not actors, they're sales engineers. So they weren't doing a great job at it, but they were being asked to do this and it was quite expensive. So, so we actually took that webinar, went through the whole process of kind of just cleaning it up a little bit, used all the same slides and information, but hired five actors to tell the story that was basically the same but rewritten. Suddenly, they just go and they hit play. They have one person there to answer live chat questions and, and handle questions at the end, and they they're get the same consistent message all the time. So that's an instant ROI, probably, because after a few weeks of paying these people to do a presentation, then you're, you've recouped the cost just by turning it into a video. And at the same time, we made a webinar replacement video for Hewlett Packard Enterprise a couple years ago where there was someone, they were literally flying around the world to give this talk. And now they've replaced that mostly. Oh, she only does the talk to the high-level people now what you do is you go to their website, you click something, and you get this HPE webinar, 
that goes through and, and we've actually you know, cleaned it up a little bit, made it look even nicer, and people can watch this anytime. She was dealing with getting up at two o'clock in the morning in California to give presentations in, in, um, via the web to Australia and Japan, and they were able to really streamline that by creating it as a video. So the ROI sometimes can be directly measured when it comes to advertising, sometimes is, is very obvious when it comes to these kind of things, and sometimes can be a little bit more of an indirect situation. But the, some of the questions around ROI were asked in a survey last year, marketers and consumers. And this was what was said, it was, this was posted on the Hub, HubSpot blog, I think about 10 months ago. They may have updated it at this point. I just saw in the last couple of days that there's some new numbers, but these are numbers from about 10 months ago. When they asked marketers, 97% of them said that video has helped increase their users' understanding of the product or service. 97% say that this is really helpful from a marketing point of view. 76% said it's increased sales, and 80% said that video has increased dwell time on your website, and dwell time is a major SEO component when you're talking about how long people spend on any particular page, Google tracks that, and Google weights pages that people actually spend time on a lot higher than the ones they don't. So that's another advantage SEO-wise of video that people don't tend to think about. And on the consumer side, it said that 95% of people have watched an explainer video to learn more about a product or service. 81% have been convinced to buy after watching a video. And 85% of people said they actually want more video from brands this year. And think about how much video there already is in all of these places. They want more video from brands this year. So it's really, really powerful through the surveys that have been done. Um, the big one from this particular survey was that when both video and text are available on the same page, 72% of people said they'd rather use the video than read the text. So having both options is really powerful, both from an SEO point of view and from a usability point of view, but if you're only gonna have one, three quarters of people wanna watch the video. So it's really, really powerful. One great example of this is something I'm sure you've all seen. You just go to Kickstarter to see how video has been pushed to the very, very forefront of the way people market things these days. When you go to a Kickstarter page on a computer, this is what you get, front and center, name of the, the by the way, this is not a campaign I know anything about, it's just something I pulled off of the Kickstarter homepage, so I'm, I don't endorse this monkey thing, whatever it is. <laughs> um, but you see the, the cost, what it's raised, and you see the video. That's it, when you, when you first arrive. But if you wanna see even more importantly how video can, can be up at the forefront, go there on a mobile device. When you open up your phone, go to kickstarter.com, all you see is that video at the top, same information, and then underneath that, I've been involved in a few Kickstarter campaigns. People spend months trying to perfect this description and images and text and everything else to explain the Kickstarter. When you scroll down on a mobile phone, all you get is what you can buy. You see the video and what you can buy. That's it. You have to go back up to the top. You have to find this link that says read more about this campaign and go in there to actually read the details. Kickstarter prioritizes only the video and the buy buttons. That's it, you have to go and seek out what people would normally think of as all the campaign material. So that's how important they consider video to be, and they're obviously quite expert in getting people to part with their money when it comes to whatever particular topic it is. And by the way, this is an example of how you can do it with a mobile device. You know, we've got this, I'm controlling it with the, with the clicker here. I can say, all right, I'm ready to have this touched, I'm ready to have this scrolled, and it looks really nice, it looks better than it would if you did one of these overhead projector things, it's totally controlled. I don't have to worry about whether this campaign is offline, whether it's been, whether it's finished. Um, this information is always there whenever I want by creating a video to put in the presentation as, instead of a live demo. So I just want to finish up with a couple of case studies based on things that we've done and what our clients have seen from video, and then I'm happy to take questions or talk to you as much as you want at the end. But the first one is actually that, that example that I put up, uh, Red Note. So they had us create this video, which was a pitch to try to get buy-in both from investors and from the music industry to allow people to, to embed, basically to embed music clips in text messages. They wanted people, people to be able to send clips from their favorite songs back and forth as texts. And you can imagine licensing terms like for this kind of thing would be horrendous, but they were able to use this video to get buy-in, build their actual app, which ended up being called GIF Note instead of Red Note, and it actually combines um, GIFs with, with music to make these little kind of audiovisual memes that you can now put out. It's an iMessage app, it's available in other some places. And they were able to get funding, get buy-in, and uh, get all the pieces they needed to build this because they had this video to explain how it would work. The app didn't work yet. It really, there, there were very few pieces that, that were functional. We were able to make a video about how it would work, and they were able to get, I'm not sure how much funding, but plenty of funding to build it and distribute it. 
Again, this quote, just because I like it. As far as our business has come, that video is still the best thing we did. It was the best investment we made. That's from the CEO of that particular example. Next is one of the big robot vacuum cleaner companies in the US. I know that Neato isn't that popular in Australia. They're the biggest competitor to Roomba. The robots are actually a little bit better. I don't know why. They only sell the old kind of bad ones here. They don't sell the good newer ones. But uh, we made a series of videos for Neato about basically how to set up the robot, how to use the robot, combination of marketing and a replacement for the instruction manual that came in the box. And they were so happy with that, they came back the next year and said, we need 35 more videos for the new models of the robot because we're going to just ditch the instruction manual entirely and now you get one page in the box, here's how to plug it in, get it charged up, go to this website and watch all the videos. Because it, people weren't using the text and people were really interested and excited about those. Even video about how to you know, change the battery, they want to watch that instead of opening up a book and reading about it. So that was a, a big win for them. And then this is the example that I gave before about one of our clients that was actually told directly by Apple and Google that if they were able to put a video in their App Store listing, they would get featured. And if they didn't have a video in their App Store listing, they wouldn't get featured. This is the UN World Food Program. Actually, jump back here. The UN World Food Program's app, Share the Meal, from a couple years ago. It's totally altru altruistic. It's something that would get featured. You literally just push a button to give a dollar to hungry kids in Africa. So it's something that, that Apple and Google wanted to, to feature, but they refused to unless a video was in there. Once the video ended up in the App Store listing, this is what happened. They were at the top center spot on the Apple App Store in US for three weeks straight because they had everything they wanted in the App Store listing. And now, especially on iOS, when you're scrolling through the App Store, the videos autoplay kind of like in your Facebook feed. So if you're scrolling through the listings that draw your eye are the ones that have app, app previews. If they don't have an app preview, it just kind of moves along. But if it has an app preview, it's alive and there and saying, watch me. So app previews are really, really important for the iOS app store in particular. Google has had them for longer, but they don't draw your eye quite as much. You have to go in and find them and hit play and do it a little bit more traditionally. So finally, just a few best practices. People always ask these questions. So before you ask your questions, I figure I'll answer a few that you'll probably already ask. First, people always want to know, how long should my video be? And that can be a wide variety of answers. If I were to give you just a total rule of thumb, not knowing what kind of video you were gonna make and for what purpose, I would say keep it between 30 seconds and a minute and a half. Now, you can break that rule, but don't make long videos. Very few of you, I'm sure, want to watch a video that says 12 minutes in the corner when you go on YouTube, unless you know that it's a video, like, a, you know, maybe you'll watch a TED Talk, although they edit those down to less than 10 minutes usually. Maybe you'll watch some, you know, very famous YouTuber's content that's longer than that. But if you don't know the source of this stuff, you want to watch something that's fairly short. You're, most people are willing to devote a minute to learn about something. They're not willing to devote eight minutes unless they already kind of know what they're getting into. So if you're gonna make a video for a landing page for your website, I would say keep that video in the kind of 45 seconds to a minute and a half range. It can be a little bit longer. People have chosen to come to your website. They know that they're here to learn about something, so they're willing to give it the higher end of that small range at the top. If you're putting your video on the App Store, when it comes to Apple, they have a very strict rule. It cannot be shorter than 15 seconds or longer than 30 seconds. So app previews have to be between 15 and 30 seconds. Google Play has a much broader range. You can actually put a really long video on Google Play. I don't recommend that. I would say keep it in this rough range, but it could be a bit longer. It could be 45, 50 seconds. But App Store app previews, 15 to 30 seconds. You now can have three. You definitely should have one. You don't need three unless you have apps that really warrant extra video content. One pretty essential these days. For customer support videos and training tutorial informational videos, those vary. Some of them would be very short, just answering a simple question like, how do I reset this? Some of them would be going through and, and saying, here's how to you know, set up a new account and, and get all the details into a calendar. That might be a little bit longer. But generally, take a long video and divide it into shorter pieces. People would rather not have to search through an eight minute video to find the part that they're learning about. They'd rather find you know, six 30 second videos that answer their questions, click, 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 than they would watch one long video that goes every, over everything, even if it's the exact same content. For ad content, definitely keep them short. Between 10 and 30 seconds, people don't wanna watch an ad kind of at all, right? But if they're gonna watch an ad, they wanna watch an ad that's short. So keep it in that 10 to 30 second range. When you're talking about investor pitches, if you're using it like I did to in, you know, incorporate either of those Google searches or just touching and scrolling through the Kickstarter video, uh, Kickstarter website, they can be short, 10 seconds, they can be five seconds, they can be pieced together into strings that you can control with a remote. Longer, maybe up to a minute and a half if you're sending it out to investors, but don't put a minute and a half long video in your pitch deck. 
investors are there as much to invest in you, the person, as in your concept, and they want to hear you. So if you want to do a long video, make that extra content, not something that's in the pitch, because they're, you're taking them. If you only get five minutes to pitch and you're taking half of that, or almost half of that for the video, that really doesn't reflect well on your ability as a founder to communicate. And then if you're doing a webinar replacement video, that's different. People are willing to sit down and watch a webinar. Sometimes they're being forced or paid to watch a webinar, so something in the five minutes to 30 minutes range is fine. But if it's gonna be long, cut it up into pieces. We had that HPE video that I think was originally a 45 minute webinar, and we turned it into seven segments. Because then people could learn about each segment, they could go back and watch something again. They don't have to, again, scroll, scan through the entire thing to find the particular parts of the video that they're interested in. Okay. So, key takeaways, hopefully, from the talk, and then I'm happy to answer any questions. First, video is for more than just ads. People think of videos as ads and marketing. Video can certainly be for SEO, it can be for customer support, it can be to more for PR than ads in some cases. Lots of uses for video out there. Hopefully, some new ones that you hadn't thought of. The web is moving toward a video first experience. Just look at Kickstarter for a concrete example of that and plenty of other places. You go to websites these days, so many of them start with a video and then go on from there. So it's really moving to video first. All of these systems now, you open up LinkedIn on your phone, even if you're on a mobile data connection, it starts playing, auto playing videos in your, in your LinkedIn feed. It's doing this everywhere, so video first. So you have to have video in order to take advantage of a video first experience. And video is no longer optional when it comes to being an app developer, especially in the app stores themselves. If you have an iOS app, you really, really should have an app preview. It makes a huge difference in discoverability, in the likelihood to get featured, and just in the user experience of people scrolling through and looking for your app. On Google Play, it's also very important because Google really loves video. Google, you know, YouTube is essential to Google's success, and these things are all powerful places to embed video and take advantage of video. And if you don't have a video, you might suffer from somebody else making a video of your product. So that's what I wanted to talk about, but I'm happy to answer any questions and talk to anybody afterwards, and also happy to offer a discount. So if you're here tonight, um, or anybody who comes in the next, we'll do this till the end of the, the, the end of this fiscal year. So uh, we we'll do three hundred dollars off a of video if you use Coca Heads twenty nineteen, or just tell us you were here. If you contact us, you don't have to remember that particular code, but uh, definitely happy to give you a discount. If you want to get in touch with me, I am Adam at appdemovideos.com. Sorry, I think I just took the code away as you were taking a picture, but it's down there at the bottom. <laughs> um, I am a Adam at appdemovideos.com. The website is obviously appdemovideos.com. There are phone numbers and contacts for me. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer some now and more later. Uh, one quick one. It sounds like your company um, prioritizes on app demos. That's your specialty. So what differentiates a, a demo of an app versus a demo of like a website or even a physical product? We make all sorts. We got started really doing mobile apps, and that's kind of where the name came from. I've actually, we've talked about changing the name sometimes, but people get what we do from the name. So um, it is primarily mobile apps. I think that the biggest difference when it comes to, to our process of making a mobile app video versus any other app video is that mobile app videos can be quite a bit harder because you need to make it look really good. You need to have the device, have a hand touching it, have this experience that feels like actually using the app. A website or desktop software you can get away with a screencast kind of thing a lot more because that's what people are used to seeing anyway, but you're not used to seeing your phone just kind of come alive by itself and do stuff. It's hard to follow actions on a phone without seeing somebody follow them. Even if you use those touch point circles, which we do sometimes, those touch points are not as easy to, to comprehend as an actual hand touching, swiping, doing those things. And getting that to look real and look right, even if it is filmed real, is hard. So that's the biggest technical issue. The other big difference between making mobile app videos and making other types of videos is having to deal with the app stores. Because most clients want a video to go in the app store in addition to a video on their website. Unfortunately for Apple, that has to be a different video because Apple, the app store videos have to be just a screen recording. Um, you can use touch points, but you can't show the phone, you can't show a hand, you can't show all sorts of stuff that we wanna show that makes it easier. And that video looks bad on a website. So we have to make a separate video for that app store listing. Google Play, not as much, but even still make it a little bit shorter. And then on top of that, technically, now there are three, four, five actually different iPhone screen shapes, although you don't have to make five different videos, you can get away with making two. Um, and having to deal with that and all those things that come up with different phones, different uh, screens, different, different aspects. But fundamentally, we're telling the same story. It's this is a piece of software or a piece of hardware that 
should have a compelling reason that you want to try it, and we're trying to show off that compelling reason so someone will actually either click buy, click download, or go and try it out. Awesome, thanks. Yeah. Good, Adam. Um, so we make a product, which is a desktop app, and we have done some videos, screen, screencast kind of videos, short little ones, um, for some of its key support items. Um, the challenge we have is that if we change our product too much, those videos are now out of date. Yes. Uh, and may not apply anymore or be, you know. So one of the, whereas if we just wrote documentation about how to use our product, of course we can just edit that text. Um, editing the videos, keeping them up to date, all that sort of stuff um, is kind of a cost barrier often if you're paying someone professionally to, yeah. to do this stuff. Sort of how, like, what would your, your advice be besides use our product? Um, <laughs> be to controlling the cost and making sure that if you're modifying your application often, um, you don't have to keep on spending lots of money making yeah, that, it. That's right. one of the biggest questions that we get because, okay, I've got version one, I need a video of version one. What happens when 1.5 or 2 comes out? And I've, even if I've just reskinned the app, so it fundamentally works the same but looks different, you don't want to show the old version. So that is something that we encounter a lot. Our production process is based on, on a system that allows us to update some of those pieces without having to go through and make the entire video from scratch again. So especially if it's been reskinned, that, that example I showed of the Kickstarter, um, that's all real footage pieced together, but it's actually layers that we can edit the various layers, so the screen layer is independent. You can actually take that screen layer out, put a new screen layer in with new information, and if you've just changed the look, mostly, big sections of the video work the same. Other sections may need to be updated to explain a new feature or to fit something in, but that is something that, that we are aware of and, and definitely tackle when we make videos, but I know you said, besides, use us. <laughs> and the big thing that I would recommend there is make sure that you control the environment that you record the videos in so that it's exactly the same every time. If you're using, uh, say, like desktop screen recording software to record a website, make sure that the dimensions of that web browser window are exactly the same all the time. There's some tools online that, that'll show you your web browser dimensions and even developer tools can, can do that, but make sure that you set it to exactly the same dimensions every time so that then if you need to replace 20 seconds of the video, it, nothing jumps, nothing looks different, nothing's a little bit different. Make sure you use the same version of the same web browser with the same skin each time and allows you to swap out chunks. Also, if you're going to go with a voiceover artist to record the actual narration, which I would recommend because sound is incredibly important, having really good sound can make the difference in someone's perception of the quality of a video much more than having excellent versus just decent video. So having sound that's good, I mean, voiceovers can be kind of expensive, but not that much. I mean, even, not that I recommend necessarily just going to Fiverr to get a voiceover, but you can pay somebody a couple hundred dollars on a variety of websites to make a voiceover and then even less to update pieces of it. So just make sure you have somebody that's not, oh, we're gonna have our, our intern do the voiceover and then a year later, the intern doesn't work here anymore, so we need to, to have somebody else do the voiceover. So just make sure that you've built things so that they're very consistent so when you go back to do them, you only have to redo the pieces that you're changing. So I'd say that's one of the biggest pieces that we use when we're going to, to make sure that the videos are updatable in the future, is just try to control things as much as you possibly can so that when it comes time to do it again, you can just go back to all those settings, go back to all those things, and just swap out the pieces that are required. Uh, just an idea, you give us a $300 discount. Right. What, what's the rough cost of a, like, a, want to do an App Store video, what would be the rough cost? I, I know there's, there's yeah, a yeah. thousand variables, but. It, it, it depends on a number of different factors, uh, as you guessed. I would say that the easiest thing to tell you is that a video that is for this kind of landing page thing, that would be the, the minute to minute and a half video, uh, we generally charge around 3,000 to 3,500 Australian dollars for that. That includes the script, it includes all of the, the music, it includes all the planning. We work with you for that. So it's actually pretty affordable when it comes to, like even some people who are an indie developer bootstrapping can afford to do that when they're done with the product. It's not cheap, we know that, but a lot of places charge 10, 15, 20, 50,000 dollars for these things. We charge a few thousand dollars. The App Store videos don't end up costing a lot less these days because we actually need to make three or more of them in order to fill out your App Store listing. You need a video that's properly shaped for the iPhone SE, iPhone 8, and iPhone 8 Plus size, which you can get away with making one video for, but the square cornered iPhone is one video, and then you need to make another video for the rounded corner iPhones, the, the, the 10S and the 10R. Um, so even if it's the same story and the same pieces, we need to actually record and edit the video 
twice. So it can be a little bit less expensive to do those videos. Uh, it can be substantially less expensive to redo those videos because, again, everything is controlled in that situation. You really are just saying, okay, we're using Apple's tools to record this because you have to or they'll reject it. Um, so, yeah, like everybody has to deal with rejections in the App Store if you do one little thing wrong. Um, we've never actually had a video rejected, by the way. We make sure that we follow the rules. But that, I would say that you could look at that same few thousand dollar price to do a full set of app previews, even somewhat including a, um, an iPad version, if you want, as long as it's the same story. If you wanted just one app preview video, we could do it for less, but we don't rec really recommend that because you have to, like, if, if you have an iPhone app that works on the iPhone 10, then they show you the iPhone 10 app preview. They don't show you the iPhone 8 app preview if you go on an iPhone 10, and they don't show you the iPhone 10 app preview if you go on an iPhone 8. You just don't get an app preview, and you're missing one of your screenshots, which is a big detriment. So, unfortunately, it means making multiple videos. So it adds, they are less expensive each, but you have to make several of them. So, roughly a few thousand. Some of the videos we make, shorter videos for put, putting in uh, investor pitches, those can be less expensive. Big, complicated videos with actors and locations cost more, but most of the videos we make are in that few thousand, give or take, probably somewhere between 2,500 and like 4,500, mostly around three to 3,500. So you're getting about 10% off, basically, <laughs> to be transparent. Any other questions? Oh, good. Thanks, Adam. Yep. Thank you.